ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mobile Fire Challenger series. I am Rapid, with me is Azaraki, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get into game number three of the evening. It's going to be Infinite Odds, the replacement for Exertus Zeal, taking on Reality Check Gaming. And uh, Infinite Odds, I, I like to call them Infinite Otters, because it is Otters' team. Um, they've actually been playing a lot, uh, maybe not in MCS, but uh, in EPS, they've actually faced uh, Reality Check Gaming a few times. Uh, also, back in the NESL Premier League, I believe they also played and currently infinite odds has the winning record but it's not just you know them stomping rxg all over the board reality check puts up some amazing games and these are two very very evenly matched teams so especially with uh, infinite odds coming in in place of exertus zeal um i gotta say i'm looking to see some interesting things from once again another completely new lineup we saw team summon have some issues with that but this time around it's infinite odds and a team that you guys may not have seen before but you've probably heard of dj Lambo, he drives that everywhere across the rip. Former sub for Team Dignitas, and uh, you got to see him in LCS, uh, I think, once last season. But coming into the game, we already did picks and bans. Rise, Nasus, Oriana, and Singe taken out. And uh, some very big focus on AP mids and uh, banning out that Singe from IKENIU. Probably should have banned out like his Renekton or something or other, because with that first pick, it's going to be an Elise. Yeah, there are a lot of times where Renekton is actually a little bit more powerful than Singed. Singed is more of the straight-up tank where if you do stand in his poison for a really long time, he does a lot of damage, but he just doesn't do as much damage as Renekton. He's, and he's also not that early game power as Renekton, but it looks like we don't really need to worry about that as there is an Elise pickup. Although could be in Elise bid, we know Arthalon really likes that, so we could be seeing it all around the MCS in a couple of games more than just those to-be-determined games. Uh, but looking over at the reality check gaming it looks like they're going to head it up the their first picks with jarvin and thresh so two already very big playmakers uh, we always talk about thresh as being one of the biggest playmakers as a support he can death sentence you follow up with the death sentence use flay use his box there is a huge in possibility for initiation on his kit that it's just most teams decide to ban him out but at this point it looks like they're keeping him on the board and i think a lot of teams th say all right we don't really mind if you get Thresh so long as we can get Nami. And that is exactly what Infinite Oz looks like they're doing right now. They're picking up the Nami Vein bot lane. Very, very popular. This is one of the most common bot lanes in MCS, I have to say. And it is rightfully so. Nami complements Vayne's early game kit so well, where three shots are is the buff you get from Ty Color's Blessing. You get three slow procs on three auto attacks, and that is the exact amount you need to land a good amount of silver bolts. So that really helps Vayne out in her lane, and on top of that, if she lands in Aqua Prison, then, then Vayne can tumble into position, use her Condemn, and knock whoever it is to the wall on top of that, and that is a very good synergy that those two have in the bottom lane. Now, they're going to be going up against Thresh Caitlyn, so Caitlyn's going to be able to poke out a lot, and if anything go and if anything gets a little hairy, we have Thresh who's either able to bail her out or completely turn the initiation into their favor. So that's another possibility that a Thresh lane brings to the table. All right, and keep in mind, we're not just looking at uh, the uh, AD carry support lane for infinite odds, but over on RxG, it's going to be Thresh Caitlyn. Very very strong early game lane and also some possibilities for some early pushing in there as well last pick though it's gonna be actually really key because they already know they don't know actually what they're going up against so they're gonna have to pick a mid lane into rxg's mid lane and uh, hopefully it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to kind of counter out because uh, i don't know i mean when you think about gragas he actually can side lane and does uh, pretty much the same thing for zed so actually a lot of versatility here coming out from infinite odds RxG don't know quite what they're going up against, and that's very well played from Infinite Odds in the picking phase, because that means that they, even though they were forced to give away their entire lineup first, they haven't quite given away anything. And yeah, I have to say, one thing that I do expect from Infinite Odds, however, is a, a lane swap, because Vayne Nami is a very popular lane swap combination. If you have those two champions against one person, then if Nami lands that glacier, or that room, I'm getting my prisons mis mixed up, Aqua Prison, then there's no one to stop Vayne from following up. If it's a duo lane, then whoever she lands the Aqua Prison on can follow up and protect whoever it is that got Aqua Prisoned from Vayne. But that's not going to happen in a 2v1 lane. That's one of the reasons that it's popular. Another one is the fact that Vayne is just going to be able to get free farm if she gets a 2v1 lane. That's very popular as well. And we know that uh, both Gragas and Zed 
can 2v1 pretty well. They both farm from a distance. Their CS is really no problem for either of these two champions. And I think Reality Check Gaming might have predicted this a little bit as they are going for a Vladimir pick. And, you know, we, we don't even know whether it's whether or not it's going to be an AD carry support swap to the top lane or even to the mid lane. So we really can't call what the lanes are going to be like at this point, but I can... I can pretty much guarantee that it's going to be not the standard AD carry support bot lane. Oh, I mean, we've seen non-standard lanes in every game so far tonight, so looking to see uh, exactly how these teams want to go ahead and get it done. We are into the three-minute spectator delay, so they're actually going to get out onto the rift. And I got to say, when you're looking at the team composition, it's actually kind of interesting. The Rise ban, you see it first banned out by Infinite Odds, and that is because of the one, the only, Tofu Shift. This guy has gone legendary with every single time he's gotten rise for rxg in this tournament sometimes it's not quite enough to turn things around for his team though but you still can't fault that guy's rise it's immense like going with vladimir you don't actually see a lot of vladimirs in mcs lcs eps any of the tournament series going on right now uh, i was a little bit more popular over in Korea and Southeast Asia, but uh, you really don't. It kind of gets outclassed by a lot of top lanes this time around. It's go, or at least in NA, um, it's going mid lane this time. It will be X Shepherd top lane, and they actually kind of switch out roles a lot. Uh, X Shepherd traditionally a mid laner, now going top for RXG. And if you guys are having trouble remembering which team is which, then A, we've got stuff on the uh, on the board for you to watch, and B, you can also think of it as Infinite Otters going up against RXG, and there's an X in front of Shepherd's name, so. That should help you out there. At least that's what I use to remember it because uh, it, it took me a while to get these teams in my mind. But once you see these guys play, they have very distinctive play styles and definitely some stuff to take away. Oh, yeah. And we're also seeing a little bit more. You know, there is a late game comp for both sides. I, I would I want to say that both sides have a very strong late game, but that's not to say that the early game is anything to scoff at either. We see already reality check the jarvan is a very strong early game champion he's got a lot of dueling potential in the jungle so if say elise were to catch him out in the jungle he could either hold his own in the fight or he would be tanky enough to escape from the fight on that as well so that's something that plays into their favor and we also keep talking about thresh but he is one of the biggest playmakers so i can see whichever lane the ad carry and support are going to go for reality check gaming, that is going to be a very action-packed lane, especially since there is a jungle Jarvan. And I could really say the same for infinite odds as well. Elise is a very gank-heavy jungler on top of that. She can repel as a gap closer, and that is a huge ability. That It covers so much ground, and on top of that, she is untargetable while she is up in the air for repel. Once she comes down, she can also go and stun whoever it is but we are going to cut to a quick commercial break quick shout out to our sponsors i buy power fatality gaming and razor academy we'll be right back 